Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name's Corey, and today I'm going to explain to you how I got this aged, worn out painting effect on this photograph. So for this, um, I did use Photoshop and Lightroom, and I also used the Infinite Texture Panel plug plugin to get the textures that I needed, but you could easily find equivalents for free, you know, on free stock sites, or if you already have a stock subscription, um, you don't really need the plugin to get this effect. So this is the finished effect, and real quick I'll kind of go through what I was aiming for. Um, one thing I did when I made this is I didn't allow myself to look at any uh, inspiration images. I wanted to kind of think what it meant to me for like a painting to look really worn out and aged. And I wanted to go with this kind of like vertical smear look as if the painting has been, you know, like maybe transported improperly or it fell over and got scratched, I don't know. Um, I also wanted certain places where the colors were bleeding and it was faded, and I also wanted a bunch of texture. So those were some things that I had in mind when I put this together. Now I'm going to hop over to Photoshop because that's where I originally did all of the retouching and the edit. <coughs> Excuse me. So, typically when I'm doing a, an edit like this, I would stop somewhere around here. I might do a little bit more color toning, maybe add some blur around the edges. But, you know, it generally looks like this. Um, just standard, like, beauty retouching. Uh, you can see the flowers, they're, they're all real, as in this is a backdrop that I put together. But all these flowers are fake so they don't really hold up well upon closer inspection. So I also wanted to do more of a painting effect on the flowers to get rid of that. I've already done some of that in her hair, as you can see, it kind of looks like brush strokes, but I saved, you know, I didn't do it to the flowers during the retouch because I didn't really know which direction I wanted to go in the beginning. So the first texture I did on here, it's actually a filter, it's the Let's see if you go to filter, stylize, oil paint. I did the oil paint effect. I just messed with the sliders until I got something that I liked. And you can already see a big difference. There's still like some texture here from that fabric, but overall you can't see the frilled edges. Um, I'll show you the mask here. I'm gonna hold alt and click on the mask. Um, most of it's white. I didn't want to get the painting effect on her skin. I got it a little bit on her outfit and a little bit on her hair. That's it. And, uh, I like how that looked. It kind of like tied, for me, it tied the whole image together. Um, so once I did that, then I decided I'm going to go for the more worn out effect. And I, I don't know where this idea came from. I was looking for, you know, some sort of like paint splotches uh, that would make it look messy. And I just had the idea to use um, like a galaxy or like a starry sky. So that's all this is. I found that in the, the infinite texture panel. I added a curves adjustment layer to it just to make the whites stand out more. And I set the blend mode to lighten and I've got the opacity to 77. Those are just settings that I just messed around with until I got a look that I liked. Uh, so right now I've got a black background beneath it just to show you what it looks like. I'm gonna turn that off. And I, oh yeah, I did one more thing on this one. I'm gonna double click there. Um, I did some, well, it looks like a lot of blend if. If you've never used this, I'll give you a quick rundown. Um, you can choose what shows up when the, this layer and what's underneath interact. So I'm telling it that the blacks in the starry sky, I don't want to show up. They're going to fade out. That's why all that black isn't really showing up, but the white stars are. And then you can also make adjustments for the underlying layer. Um, looks like I got it only applied to the darker areas. So it's kind of advanced, but really I just messed with those until I got this effect where most of these white speckles are in the dark areas around the flowers. And that's kind of what I was going for. It, You know, you see it here. Um, I didn't mask this away. It's all that blending that kind of makes the flowers stand out like that. 
So I like the direction that was going. I'm going to enable this mask. And you can see where I masked away most of her skin. I didn't want the speckles on her face, just a little bit around it. The next layer, I'm going to move this black layer up, turn it back on. So what I did is I actually copied that starry sky. <coughs> and then I did a motion blur. Uh, I think it's 90 degrees when it's straight up and down. And it was a pretty big blur. I think it was like 250 or 500 because um, I really wanted those that like streaked look um, so like I, s I stated earlier I um, I wanted the like smeared like it's kind of been dragged on the floor look so these two layers combined gives us those white spots and then it also gives us the white streaks that come from those spots so the line up perfectly because it's just a copy of that layer with the motion blur it looks like I chose screen and 77% on that one as well so that's the, the white streaks and that's the white spots. So I liked the direction it was going, especially in these areas um, with that, the, the blurriness. And I did more masking here just to, once again, kind of keep it off uh, the subject. Uh, I like the direction that was going. Um, at this point, I did save it. <clears throat> and because I didn't know where I was going after this point, um, the rest is now in this file. The difference between these two is in Lightroom. Um, I just did a, a color lookup table, um, just kind of changed the colors a little bit, and that's what it looked like. Brought it back into Photoshop. I decided that I wanted to, wanted it to look even more worn out than this, so I'm going to turn on this gray background and show you my next layer. Uh, I've got it set to soft light, opacity 50%. I'm going to take it up to 100 and normal just so you can see what this actually looks like so just another random texture I like the look of it um, did some experimenting and got it to work for me so I'm gonna hit control Z twice take this back to 50% and soft light when I take off this gray solid color I'll show you the effect it has kind of adds uh, more contrast back into the image a little bit more organic look and then once again I had a, a mask where I kept it off the subject somewhat. I'm going to move this gray solid color layer up, turn it on, and show you the final layer here. So for this one I have hard light 65%. I'm going to take it to normal. Same thing because it's on gray. And take it up to 100. So it's kind of this like concrete texture. Once again, I just picked it at random just to see what I could do with it. I'm going to hit Control Z twice. One, two, put it back to hard light, 65%. And this is what it looks like with it on and no mask. Um, like I said, just from experimenting, I, I personally loved how much texture this added to it. Like, it really reminds me of like a really old painting you'd see in a museum where you know, maybe it has some water damage, or you know, it's it just hasn't really aged well. And um, I also liked how it brought a lot more warm tones into the uh, the photograph. Um, but it's really splotchy at the same time. It's not just like warm tones over the whole image. And then once again, uh, this is the mask for it. Looks like I got pretty detailed in this one. I put some of it in her eyes to put some of that um, warm color into the iris. Uh, it's it's subtle. I don't even know if it had that much of an effect, but kind of brushed the areas where I didn't want this like corroded look. So that's pretty close to finished. Um, at that point, I was done in Photoshop. Uh, I liked the effect. I just wanted to do some more color toning. So back in Lightroom, I used a color lookup table. It's one of the RGG.edu ones. I got it at 50%. This is with it off, this is with it really high, and I just liked where it looked at 50. Um, made it a little bit warmer. Took the highlights, the whites, and the curves on the white side here down. I'm going to look at the original real quick. Yeah, I just made it more of a flatter image it looks like. Uh, this is funny, I turned the vibrance and saturation down here. 
um, later you'll see where I turn it back up uh, made the yellows a little bit brighter reds a little bit darker did some sharpening I did color tone a little bit more here uh, split toning this is the color I have in the highlights this is the color I have in the shadows 15% and 10% um, just kind of trying to tie together the image for like the final overall look that way nothing stands out too much uh, this is a new thing that I tried I've done vignetting in Lightroom before usually just black vignette and this is normally on highlight priority I don't know if I've ever even looked at this list but I noticed that it said paint overlay and I added a little bit of white to the corners it's really subtle but I thought you know, brighter corners might look interesting because I usually do a, a darker vignette on my portraits and last thing is I added some grain uh, 20% and once again just to kind of tie the whole image together having that that uniform grain over everything and I was pretty much done there there's one more thing I did um, I used a plug-in it added a red light leak in the top right um, since that's where the light source is in the painting um, I just wanted a little bit more warmth and light up in the top right corner and that's pretty much it um, like I said I just printed this on some nice matte paper it looks super cool um, I'm definitely gonna play around with it some more um, you know with all the different textures and blend modes and stuff the, the combinations are endless so yeah, if you like it or if you have any suggestions or would like to see me do something else, let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.